right, and uh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> we are back. We are back. Man, I missed you guys. It seems like it's been, it always seems like it's forever when we take a, a hiatus there, but I am super, super excited to be back doing the show, kicking off quarter two of season four. Oh, man, just uh, ready to rock and roll. I always feel a little rusty as well. But uh, like I said, you you know, always know the drill. Make sure you hop into uh, the comments. Say, hey, where you're tuning in from, you know, you know, because I always like for this to be an uh, interactive, engaging show. So um, hop in, say, hey, um, let me know, like I said, where you're tuning in from. Like I said, I am super excited to be back um, and getting this this quarter kicked off. Um, it's been way too long for sure. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed all the little teasers and clips that I've showed uh, during the hiatus from past episodes. You seem to have liked it. Uh, but, uh, hey, we're back live now. You know the drill. Make sure you hop into the Facebook group community. Get plugged in, facebook.com slash groups slash the color of motion. Join the family. You know I am from a big family, and I love a large family. So definitely want the community to grow, connect with industry professionals. We share uh, industry news, have all kinds of fun as well. So, again, facebook.com slash groups slash the color of motion. Uh, become part of the family. Miss Maggie, appreciate you tuning in and stopping by as always. Like I said, super excited uh, that you guys are joining me uh, for this new live episode here. I've been looking forward to it for a while now. Also, make sure you follow us on Instagram. I got a lot of new information to share with you guys, which I'll probably do as a uh, separate uh, live stream uh, regarding the color of motion, there's a lot of kind of changes, things that's been happening with the show that I definitely want to share out uh, with everybody. But uh, you can follow us, uh, like I said, on Instagram uh, at Instagram.com slash the color of motion. Definitely want you to get plugged in there as well. Uh, but I always we're here every Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, live on the YouTube channel, LinkedIn, the Facebook group, and the website for the show. Uh, but I do always encourage everybody to get plugged into the YouTube channel. Uh, there we're all able to kind of communicate with one another, youtube.com slash Don Terrell, and you can check the show out there. Definitely want you uh, to be part of uh, the show there as well. Also, you know the store is open. Definitely want you to hop by. Pick up some gear, the color of motion.net slash swag. You can pick you up some shirts, hoodies, mugs. Like I said, we are always putting new things in there. So definitely want you to check out and get some gear. My only request, though, is if you do get something, snap a picture of yourself, send it on over so we can share it on the show, share it on the social channels. Um, and like I said, give you uh, the shout out uh, that you, you know, always so richly, richly deserve. Uh, what else? Oh, I want to thank a big shout out uh, to today's sponsor of the show, uh, GainsCon Film Festival. They are a film festival, a yearly film festival. This year, I'll be live streaming the show from the event, uh, put on by my man Barry Gaines. Uh, out in Las Vegas, July 11th and July 12th. I'm so looking forward to going out there. Um, it's an independent sci-fi, horror, and fantasy filmmakers festival. Um, and definitely looking forward to kind of broadcasting from there. Something new for this season that I'm trying. I'm looking forward to doing more of those uh, for sure. But it is coming up. I'll uh, definitely be giving you more information for sure. But thank you, Gaines Khan, for being part of the Color of Motion. And, again, looking forward to going out there and live streaming the show out in Las Vegas. You know, you got to love Las Vegas. So, And I love Las Vegas for sure. Uh, so, like I said, 
you know, it's been a minute. I feel a little, I always feel, like I said, a little rusty, you know, coming back after hiatus. But, again, I missed you guys so, so much doing the show. Uh, we're really engaging. But, man, this season we got a lot of great guests, and today is no, no exception. Um, so, I think, you know, without further ado, we can kind of get this uh, show on the road. What do you say? We are back and ready to get this one on the road. Like I said, I've been super looking forward to sitting down with my next guest and friend uh, and chopping it up with him. His company's doing some amazing, amazing things. Uh, so what do you say we get this train on the tracks and get it rolling? My next guest is partner and creative director at Triggerfish, where he oversees a slate of projects in development and production. 2023 saw the release of three projects in which he acted as executive producer, including including uh the kizazi moto generation fire if you haven't already seen it on disney plus definitely check it out an anthology of 10 short films for disney plus super team four for netflix and kia and the kimoja heroes for disney e1 and frog box in 2015 he oversaw the trigger fish story lab an initiative where four feature films and a four TV series were developed after a continent-wide search that drew almost 1,400 entries. He also directed and co-wrote the feature film Columba, which premiered in competition at Annecy International Animation Festival in 2013. The script was co-written with Rafaela Del Dane. He, was, he also produced and wrote on Triggerfish's other two films, Adventure in Zambezia and Seal Team, released globally in December 2021 on Netflix. And he was producer of the Blender short film, we're diving into that Blender, Troll Girl and Belly Flop, which screened over at over 140 festivals and won 14 awards. His graphic novel, Pearl of the Sea, co-written with Rafaela Del Dane, again, and William Samuel, was recently released to critical acclaim. Uh, everybody, please help me welcome my very special guest and friend, Mr. Anthony Silverstone. <laughs> Anthony, so, so excited uh, for you to be on the show. Like I said, I've been looking forward to having you on, been uh, following Trigger uh, Triggerfish for a while, and uh, just in all the content uh, that you've been uh, creating and starting to come out of Africa. So thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show and kicking off quarter two, season four here. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, I like to get uh, started. Uh, were you, uh, are you a native born African? Are you, were you natively born yeah. in Africa? Yeah, I was born in Cape Town and um, spent pretty much my whole life there. Um, so 
it's yeah i've only spent like one year in vancouver but most of the rest of the time was in cape town it's um it was but i remember going to vancouver and a lot of people going but you're white and i was like <laughs> yeah we have white people there yeah there it's, are it's some it's there like are, 10%. Yeah, there are some white people in Africa for sure and native born uh African yeah. for sure. Um yeah. were you always kind of interested in this space or was this something that you kind of picked up, you know, a little uh, later on in life or were you always interested in animation and wanting to do animation and create stories? Yeah, th you know, when I look back, I was always interested. I used to write little stories. And um, when I was about seven, I think my father actually made a little stop motion short with me because he was studying film. And I think he he was visiting and had a little time with me and was like, what do we what do I do with this kid? And we just played with clay, you know, and um, and then, you know, by the time I finished school and I was looking at what to study, animation was really just starting out in South Africa. It was the first year that a, an animation course was being offered. So I kind of thought, I don't know if it, who, who's teaching it, you know, where did they come from? And so I actually studied science first and that's actually how I ended up in Vancouver. I was working as a scientist for a year there. And while I was there, I thought it would be a good opportunity to you know, learn, get into animation if I could, because there was van arts and, um, they had a little part-time stop motion course on weekends. And so that was how I got into it really. And, um, so I've, I've always been interested in it, but the opportunity wasn't always there. And yeah. so I had to kind of make my own opportunities. Yeah. And I, when I, when I came back to South Africa, then I just helped to kind of grow the industry because yeah, there was a bit happening, but not, not a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, uh, Kizazi Moto um, has been, or not Kizazi Moto, but Triggerfish has been putting out, you know, a lot of great content. You can see a lot of stuff on uh, Disney Plus and Netflix uh, for sure. Um, but you just mentioned that you, you dabbled in kind of stop motion as well. Right. Did, is, is it more the medium or are you sticking like more is triggerfish sticking more with 2d and 3d uh as opposed to some of the other mediums like you just mentioned stop motion mm -hmm. and that type i think um at, like for the last uh 10 15 years we've been known as a cg studio and that is still kind of where our expertise lies but it actually the the, the company started out in stop motion and that's how i kind of joined um so the company started in 1996 as a stop motion studio and then we shifted to cg around 2007 and um we've been doing a few 2d shorts so we've you know we've been dabbling in 2d um and and going forwards i think we are looking to do more 2d as well but yeah stop motion is a trickier one because you need the whole space and you know um yeah, the expertise as well, which which we don't have anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's it's I think which is kind of the it seems like the challenge. Um, but mm. opening up now, I think with a lot of you know creators over there starting to get the opportunity um, to really create uh, things like that. What do you? Um, what are some of the animations? Um, that you enjoyed watching kind of growing up and that kind of really inspired you um, as you were going along? Well, yeah, it actually goes back to stop frame again because I I really enjoyed The Nightmare Before Christmas. I watched that the most times I think of any movie. And then the Aardman animations like Wallace and Gromit. And I remember watching those and thinking how specifically British they were and thinking that that made it special and different. And I sort of feel like the same, maybe that was partly what inspired me or us to focus a bit more on like what makes us different, you know, yeah. like leaning into the Africa um, sort of influence and sensibility. And um, yeah, so that, that I think did inspire me. Yeah. Well, do you feel like that's, uh, I, I don't want to say, a, a dying art, but you don't see a lot of stop motion mm -hmm. films. You know, there are some companies that are doing some great ones, obviously. 
Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, Guillermo del Toro just did Pinocchio yeah. not too long ago um, and you stop motion. But again, I think there are obviously more 2D, 3D type films and things out there. Do you feel like um, stop motion is almost a dying kind of art? I, I don't know if it's it's dying more than it you know was 10 years ago or something. I feel like it's just kind of hit a point of like they're always going to be those um, like those Pinocchio you know, type movies, you know, um, and especially for artists starting out, for animators who can just shoot something on their cell phone, you know, yeah. um, the technology exists nowadays uh, so much more easily to make films than when I was growing up. Um, and I, like actually, especially in Africa, I think it's such a useful medium for people to get into animation because they can work with their hands and they can, you know, yeah, just use a cell phone and, and put something online and, and maybe build an audience. I, I met, there's a, a Nigerian um, stop motion animator who got a grant recently to start up something in, in Lagos. And so, you know, maybe we'll find some surprising pockets yeah. of stop motion that yeah, and I'm not sure if you're you're talking about Esther, but uh, yes, yeah, yes, she exactly. was on the show. Uh, like I oh, said, wow. uh, amazing stop motion. I think she's been really the only stop motion artist uh, that I've had on the show as of yet. Um, but wow. I love the medium and what she's doing, especially yeah. not only for stop motion, uh, but for uh, African women getting into the space mm. and really encouraging it. Um, and I've talked about this with several guests um, from the continent. Um, it is growing, but what do you feel like the biggest hurdle that Africa is, is having to kind of overcome in order for the industry to be as big as it is over here, where you got a plethora of studios, just a plethora of content coming out. What are some of the challenges that you see uh, the continent having to, to kind of work through in order for the medium to be really successful yeah. as it should. I mean, there, there are a few challenges. I think, you know, in South Africa, we're quite lucky that we have some government support. Yeah. I don't think many of the other African countries have that. So we've got the National Film and Video Foundation who really have, you know, built up the film industry and animations kind of piggybacked and, and grown alongside it. And I think as they saw the potential for it to actually make money commercially, they, they invested in it and they've helped to send people to Annecy and to, you know, kids screen, but, and, and I think Nigeria is doing that now. And I think Kenya is starting to sort of form some organization. Um, there are a few places, but it, it, it does need some government support. I mean, if you look at France as an example, like they have so much government support and yeah. they have these massive companies where they get a lot of subsidies and um, rebates. Um, so that that's definitely a big one. I think then the infrastructure, you know, like the internet here is not always reliable. Yeah. Power is not always reliable. We have a lot of cuts, power cuts. Um, yeah. And so that kind of basic, basic thing does create yeah, just a lack of, I guess, stability. Um, but, you know, I mean, talent is the thing that is there in, and, 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 and there's so much of it. And I think that's where we have an advantage in a way, um, because it definitely feels like in the rest of the world, you know, everyone's trying to have come up with something new, whereas in Africa, it just feels like everything we do is new because it's never been done before. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah for sure uh for sure and, and, and do you also do you also feel like um maybe not so much now uh because there's more content coming out but uh maybe a few years ago or some years ago that um there was this kind of stigma of the i guess the quality of that was coming out and also um just the the type of stories that were coming out uh, that are now you also feel like that was kind of a thing early on, um, and I also yeah. had talked to somebody else about just the culture of how some people think towards animation that it's kind of and you can't really get telling store people. It's definitely, you know, this kind of concern that that 
could 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 companies trust an African studio? Keep going. Hopefully, we're still going live. Everybody, my internet is, I think, is acting up uh, for whatever reason. So, this is going to be an interesting live show here. Okay. My internet, I apologize, everybody, but my internet is kind of wigging out here. I'm not sure why it's playing. Okay, I think I had that click. Wow, like I said, what happens live happens live, and obviously I'm a little rusty from being being away too long. Uh, but I think we are are back live. Uh, let me make sure we are uh, for sure. Looks like okay. I think we are. Uh, I am quickly going to check just to make sure. Uh, of how this is going. Anybody on there, please let me know if we're still uh, going live. I want to quickly jump over to uh, LinkedIn just to see if we're we're still live here. Uh, hopefully the show is. Uh, yeah, we are. Okay. So we are, <laughs> we are still going live. Like I said, this, what a way to kick off uh, season, season quarter two. Uh, but no, I was saying uh, before we got inter interrupted there, um, do you feel like uh, now people are more receptive to the con content that's coming out of Africa uh, now that you've gotten mm -hmm. studios such as Disney, Netflix, really going out of their way to get original content, new content, different content um, from a vast uh, array of different creators. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was saying when we first started out trying to sell, you know, our first feature film and, and, you know, you're trying to raise pre-sales and, and convince people that you're going to make a, an animated feature film from Africa and they had their suspicions. Um, so definitely once that film came out, um, adventures in Zambezia came out 2012. I think then people started to take notice of us a little bit more and, and looked at, at Africa a little bit more seriously. And um, I think, you know, it's just kind of gone from there. Um, there's always going to be um, a certain sense of risk, you know, in the dark continent. It's like people don't know what they don't know. Um, and so it takes time to build those relationships with, with, you know, going to festivals and markets and things like that. And just having more, like you say, more stuff out there from Africa. So, um, I mean, I remember once being asked, there was some survey and how, like how many hours of content, you know, do we produce per year? And I was like, oh, for a few minutes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now, now it's actually is, it's, it's getting to that now where it is a few hours. Um, and there are a lot more studios from across the continent that are doing world-class quality work. And so I think with each project that gets released, the, the reputation is more yeah. kind of established. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously you can see from Kazazi Moto, there are a lot of different styles. Um, it just, mm. you know, looks, mm um to the, the content that's coming out of africa um did, yeah. did you feel like it would have it was going to be more of a i want to say a hard sell to uh native africans as opposed to uh us over here in america because animation and the industry is is so big mm -hmm. um whereas over there it wasn't something that's i guess normally people would mm. watch. Like I said, I had an artist on here and his, you know, he was saying his mother was thinking it's, it's, you know, what are you doing? It's for kids. It's for children. It's not yeah. something that's normally yeah. watched yeah. or just well, accepted. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think a lot of people grow up watching animation and then they, they don't like, they don't admit it, but even as adults, you know, they are a lot of animation fans. Um, 
it's more, I guess, as a career, it's maybe not seen as such a thing yet. And definitely kids have to kind of convince their parents it's, it's worth, it's worth studying and worth getting into. Um, that's maybe more challenging than, and then in the States or, or elsewhere, but I do think that's changing. And I mean, um, yeah, like the, 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 there's, there's so little African animation. So like most people I think are starved for watching themselves on screen. Um, so the, I think there is a, an appetite for it. Yeah. The challenge is that there's not, mm, there are not many streamers that, that actually do broadcast across Africa. So I think it's getting, getting access to that content is also the challenge. Um, you know, Netflix has a few countries in Africa that it's streaming. Disney only has a cup uh, like South Africa and then in, in North Africa. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, I think the challenge. And do you think it's going to take more studios like Disney um, and say Netflix uh, putting the content out there? Or do you feel like it's the growth is really going to come from just independent creators putting their work out there, whether it's on their social platforms or these other channels to get their, their ideas and stories out there? Do you feel like it's going to come from the small creator, that big shift? Yeah. I, I think it's probably going to be both because you kind of need the big guys to still invest and support. I mean, we couldn't have done Kizazimoto without Disney. They gave a huge amount of creative support along the way as well um, and guidance and um, and the funding, you know, I mean, they yeah. paid for it. But, but I, I do think there's a huge sort of drive creatively from, a, 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 I mean, a lot of, a lot of like the like guys just on Instagram, you know, like sort of pushing each other because they follow each other and they see how good they are. And then it grows from there and, and YouTube and TikTok and everything. I mean, there's definitely um, a lot more independent animators that are creating this kind of sort of groundswell, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess it's still going to be that, you know, that the big guys like Disney, you need that scale to get to a full like 52 episode season maybe of something but i mean there's a local company in in south africa who did a, a little series of like five second shorts on on TikTok. it's yeah. called noodle and bun and um it's grown and it's become viral and it's like now they're doing a series of it or a feature it's just you know those kind of things can take off as well yeah yeah uh for sure um what was i mean kizazi moto was a big big project obviously you were working with disney um what was kind of the one the biggest challenge that uh you guys had you know creating it um and was there anything that kind of surprised you after the fact hmm. oh, interesting question i don't know um the the challenge there were a lot of challenges because it was a big project i think nothing of we hadn't done anything of that scale before just working with like well, there were 14 different directors you know across six african countries but done at studios across the world like ireland canada you know uk south africa egypt and so i think the biggest challenge was just sort of in that beginning phase of getting everyone set up correctly so that the directors had the right support system around them because you know a lot of these directors were first time filmmakers they yeah. either come from writing or concept art or live action and so you know for the writers we had to find some artists to pair them with and for the artists we had to find writers to pair them with and then you know finding the right um studio support as well but once the teams were set up then then it, it kind of went a bit more smoothly i mean i think it, you know the, the pre-production phase was was tough because it's trying to get a, that short film con you know the the 10 minutes it, it's like if you're packing a feature film into 10 minutes yeah, yeah. setting up a whole world you know sci-fi rules of the universe setting up characters and paying them off it was a lot to to jam in um but the surprising thing whew, i mean i think I think we all learned a lot about one another in the process. You know, I think it's weird as Africans, we, 
we still operate in bubbles, you know, and there's actually a huge amount of um, similarities and differences that we kind of hit on just in terms of language and culture and, you know, mythologies. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can see if you watch the 10 shorts, you can see there's a common thread um, story-wise and that, that just emerged naturally. You know, we didn't force it. It was just hearing what people had to say. And, you know, so like what the, the main story I think that came through from all of them was that, you know, the directors felt like they couldn't talk about the future without looking at the past. past yeah. And um, that came through very strongly where everyone really, um, I think, you know, African sci-fi were, was Black Panther until this yeah. point. And now there's like 10 different stories to show different kinds of African sci-fi. Um, and, and yet they all had that common thread. So that was maybe the surprise is like how, yeah. how much we can yeah. also uh, learn from each other. And yeah. Well, along that vein, uh, because I've, <laughs> and I don't know if it's a cliche of a question that I kind of ask, uh, you know, all my African brothers and sisters that come on, but it's always an interesting perspective um, you know, how, um, the movies that are put out from America's side that are, you know, speaking on different cultures and stuff comes across actually in that, in mm -hmm. that continent. So when Black Panther first came out, what was your kind of impressions when you saw Black Panther, mm -hmm. um, even though it was an established character, but just them kind of, um, being true to the character and the continent, uh, you know, I've heard little small things as far as dialect. And I don't think a lot of people get that there's a lot of different languages and a lot of different dialects over in Africa. And I think uh, we over here just kind of clump it all together as a South African accent, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Um, and those were the little small nuances that I noticed a lot of African creators picked up about um, Black Panther. Yeah. But I'm curious, what were your kind of impressions when you first saw Black Panther and, and your thoughts on just, you know, how accurate it was, how, you know, obviously it was entertaining because it did really well. Um, but, you know, just being true to the character and the character's backstory. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I enjoyed it a lot and it was it was refreshing to see, you know, just um, well, black, black skin, you know, in, in that sort of format yeah. of, of like, um, because, you know, yeah, like, I think in, in America, it's still, the, it's, it's not everywhere around you in that, it, the same way that it is here in yeah. South Africa. Um, so to see our world on the screen at that scale is fantastic. And it was pushed. I mean, obviously with the costumes and the yeah. sets, everything, it was so well done. Um, so it was very, yeah, it's, 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 it was great. And it set a precedent for us, you know, I mean, the, the fact that it did well, that helped change the industry for us because we could say, Oh, look, there is an audience for that kind of content. Um, so, it was it was very yeah very encouraging I guess um, yeah 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 well um, and to that point kind of from your perspective as well because like I said you know uh, I'm sure you've in, and like you mentioned earlier you kind of hear well there's whites in Africa type of thing yeah. and you know th that but from the stories that you tell. And from the native, you know, whites that are over there in Africa and are from Africa, was that kind of, uh, I want to say, sticking point or a challenging thing as far as just, you know, the stories were primarily black? Obviously, you know, there's diverse stories even within Africa mm -hmm. as far as just, you know, the white Africans and just all the stories um, in the relationships. Was that a thing as well that you felt like all the characters or everything coming from it had to be black or do you mean in be... Zazimoto? Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, in the beginning, we, we started off with a wider pool of directors. We approached about 70 and they weren't all black. Um, and I think just in the sort of narrowing down process, like we, we developed 15 shorts actually. 
Um, and and then the the ten that got selected ended up being all black. And yeah. it was it was in a way it was like, well, you know what? Actually, it 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 just made sense for the project. Um, the other stories, yeah, it's like they they are all you know that's the, it's it's tough because there's so many different dialects and races and everything across the continent and we're doing 10 stories and there's yeah. 52 countries i think in africa so you know we we knew we wouldn't do it do it all and and we knew even because of the nature of the industry uh, south africa had a more advanced animation industry than the others yeah and so we had to really try and make sure that not all 10 were going to be from South Africa. Um, yeah. So we, we tried to limit that. So there were five from South Africa and then the other five were from outside. Yeah. Um, so we had to actively kind of try and watch that and monitor it. Um, but that was what was so great because even within those 10, you know, we, we have local dialect in each of them and, and they're all different. Even in the South African shorts, the local dialect is different because there's 11 languages. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And that's, and, and like I said, I think that's kind of the, the small little nuance that unless you're African over here or your family's African, you may not pick up on just, you know, the, the dialect, um, yeah. just probably a native American, like, a, uh, that's here in this country. Like I said, we tend to kind of just clump the dialect all into kind of one African African, African dialect. Yeah. And they're like, no, you know, people from Nigeria don't say it this way. People from Kenya don't say it this way type of thing um, that we have to realize. And I think that's where such diverse stories coming out is going to educate people on just the small little nuances of African life and uh mm. everyday african life and just the things that we we go through what you you said you kind of learned a lot about each other was there one thing that you know doing not only this project but just all the other projects that you've done to this point that you've learned mm. about yourself as a person coming out of it um and just maybe mm. different thoughts about africa that you had before i mean i know you were raised mm. there it's a totally different thing, mm -hmm. but were there things that were just kind of new and fresh to you that, you know, you learned about yourself doing all of these? Yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, deep question. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, look, just it's sort of practically, I think what I realized is, you know, I, I quite enjoyed the process of kind of mentoring in a sense, you know, I, cause I've directed my own film and, and I, I could keep creating my own stories but I did step back and rather try and help other people tell their stories. And, and, you know, in the beginning, I felt a little bit like begrudging in a sense, right. I was just like, I can tell my own story rather, but, <laughs> um, but it was actually, it was actually really rewarding to meet these other creators and, um, and hear what they had to say and, and learn about them and their stories and, 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 and be able to help them because they were coming at it new, you know, and I had experience that they didn't. And so I did enjoy that process. I mean, in terms of, you know, the, the sort of African umbrella question, I, I don't know. I think, um, it was, it was interesting when we, we came over to America in February last year for the Afro animation summit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was interesting because I felt like there was definitely a sort of this process of, of the African Americans in the audience kind of going, Oh, you know, Africans are not the same as us. Like there's, yeah. there's a difference. And, um, and it's, it, it's complex, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, legacy and politics and everything, but, um, I, I, that, yeah, like, I think we, we have a lot to, a lot to offer the world in a sense. I think yeah. that's maybe what, what, um, what uh, we've always felt like we're, we're on the back foot. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and actually like coming out with this kind of content that is world-class it was kind of nice to go to the rest of the world. Like, Hey, like, look at what we can do. You know, um, yeah. we're not, we're not lesser, we're not less than, yeah. and, uh, 
so that that was that was quite nice yeah, yeah. and that's why i'm so excited about um now all the exposure of the different creators there because like i said we've all you've you've always known i've always known that you know there's just a plethora of creators there they just need the opportunity um yeah. to get their ideas and their stories out there um yeah. was i mean like you said that was kind of your first big big kind of foray was it you know how was it just feelings wise dealing with a company like the like disney you know such a big company such a big company, such a worldwide mm -hmm. company that's been around for, for ages. Um, mm -hmm. How was the feeling, you know, with you and, and just kind of how the whole thing kind of came about? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, we were lucky in a sense that we'd started working with Disney in 2015 with the Story Lab and they helped us develop some, some properties. Um, and we were working with the, the Disney Europe team who um, are very like, you know, hands on and, and, and we built that relationship. So it felt very natural and comfortable continuing in that relationship. But, you know, this was for Disney Plus yeah. um, ultimately. And so there was, you know, there were a lot more layers of sort of legal and security yeah. requirements and all that. And so we, there was pressure, you know, we knew we had to, to deliver. And we did, we did deliver on time, on budget, all of that. Yeah. But um, I will say the thing is, it's, they're there to help us succeed, you know, and they want, they want this thing to work. They want yeah. to get audiences to watch what they've made as well. So they were very supportive. And so that took away any other kind of um, unnecessary stress, I guess. Um, they were always trying to figure out how to help make it a success. Yeah. and really give the directors what they would need because that's really what it was about was supporting the talent and i really i got such a huge respect for that team at disney because they were working like we would get emails midnight you know um they worked hard and um yeah i mean it, it's each of the projects we've done has gotten bigger i guess and it's sort of you know, you think, wow, this is it. This is the biggest thing we've ever done. And then the next thing comes along. And um, so, so it's sort of, it, there's always a, a new pressure and stress and challenge, but um, that's just because it keeps growing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you see the industry? Like you said, um, where do you see the industry going there in Africa? And, mm -hmm. and when do you, if you had to kind of guess, feel like Africa will be, I mean, it's really growing now, but Africa will be at that pace where, like mm -hmm. I said, you have the resources, you have the, the, the government backing, um, you have the support, the infrastructure and everything. How, you know, mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of Afrofuturism, you know, films come out. When do you see in the future that it'll start to be uh, a little more easier for content yeah. out of there uh, from the industry to come out? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> look, I mean, I feel like over the last 10 years, you know, when I've been asked this question, I'm always like, yeah, we're at a tipping point and it sort of feels like we, we keep growing more from there. Um, this this last year and now, you know, I mean, it's a challenging time in the industry, I think. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, that's changed things again because it feels like it's sort of like we've taken a step back in a sense because it, no one's really wanting to risk they're all going for whatever's safest it's like known brands you know and all of that but i think that's a phase and it'll go by and then um in the meantime you know you've got all these creators now creating and i think they're inspired by the new content that's come out yeah. and you know it i i met people that I mean, Kumba. I mean, this is this was yeah. my film that released in you know, twenty thirteen, and I met people now who are like, I got into animation because I watched Kumba, you know, and so give us another ten years, and there'll be a whole group of kids who who enter the industry because of Kizazimoto, and they all start creating. So I think it just keeps it keeps snowballing and and getting bigger, bigger, bigger. And the government, I I, I do think across Africa 
people are going to see that there is a business. Um, you know, already I'm, I'm seeing signs. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, you know, there's been I, like I went to Ivory Coast last year and, you know, like the government is sort of getting behind film and animation there a lot more. Um, yeah. And I think as uh, yes, people, some... I think as you start to have successful, really successful films like Izazi yeah. Mojo, um, like mm -hmm. Black Panther, like the newer ones coming out, Kugali, Iwaju, yeah. and some of the other ones that are starting to come out. I think you're starting to see a lot more people understand that, hey, this can make a lot of money, still be entertaining, and still be, you know, yeah. respectful to the creators that create it and tell and the stories that are yeah. and are trying to be told, uh, for sure. And, and um, I think what's what's what it's exciting is that it becomes less about being African. It's like, we're just making good content yeah. and it's successful. Because I think in the past it's been like, okay, so there's, you know, a film from South Africa, there's a film from Nigeria. And so it like really has to represent that country almost. And um, so, I mean, we, you know, Super Team 4, our series for Netflix, that was set in Zambia. And, you know, it was, it, like, I remember the creator saying how, like, you know, she wanted to do, it was this, like, pressure in a sense, right? It's like, there's only been one show from Zambia and one animated <laughs> show. Yeah. And, and so I think the more, the, the more that, like, different creators come out with different shows and features and, and shorts, everything, like, there's less pressure to sort of, yeah, carry that burden of representing your whole entire culture and country yeah. and everything, so... Yeah, it's always a challenge being that kind of first person out there in the spotlight, uh, like you said, kind yeah. of holding that burden. But um, ultimately, yeah. with not only just stories coming from yeah. there, but stories coming from here, it comes down to the story and the heart of exactly. the story and, and whether or not it connects um, or not. Yeah. Um, for you, um, kind of what's been, uh, you know, you, you've had a, pretty varied career so far. Uh, what's been kind of the biggest uh, lesson that you've learned over this whole span? Um, is it the writing? Is it the animating? Is it the storytelling? Um, or it could be anything non-industry related that's really kind of helped to serve you. What's been the best, I guess, piece of advice that somebody's given you that's really kind of helped you along the way? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard to narrow it down to one. I think it's definitely it's about story. It's about character. Like, I think that lesson I learned from Disney for sure is like, if you want people to care about what they're watching and be engaged and entertained, you've got to create characters that they care about. And so like, and that, that, that's, that's not so easy to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think then like, the follow on lesson is sort of just like, you know, finding the, the, the right people. Like it's definitely back the talent because um, you can figure out the rest, you know? Um, so they are definitely people who I think, you know, under, understand that is it that it is about story. And I think, you know, it's harder when creators aren't so interested in taking notes, for example, because they you know, have their vision. And yeah. it's like, sure, if you know what you're doing, but, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, that's probably the main one, I think. Yeah. Um, it comes down. It, it my, comes down to story. Yeah. Uh, like I said, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. Disney. Um, I always felt like Pixar was like really the the top when it came to mm. the, they they really focused on the story first, and then it, just yeah. drew in the visuals, which is why pretty much yeah. all of Pixar's films. Yeah do so well and uh -oh. look i mean we we tried that like i think we learned that lesson from them we were like well we can't compete on budgets and so you know the, the quality might not be pixar quality on the technical side but if we can figure out how to make a story that that works you know and i got you know we're still learning that it's still yeah. a journey um i don't think we hit the pixar stories on our first outing but um I definitely think we've tried to put more attention on story maybe than some of the other studios. Um, 
And I think that's why part of the reasons why we've been more successful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are there certain types of, like I said, stories that you enjoy doing? Um, is it more for kids? Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there's a vast array, you know, of styles mm -hmm. of animation, you know, from the really simple kid style, like I said, Disney, Pixar, to the more cerebral mm -hmm. anime style films that really mm -hmm. get you to, they have deep, deep, uh, mm -hmm. you know, thoughts and social things in them. Is there any one style that you kind of tend to like more than others or does it really not matter as long as it comes down to the story of whether it's a more cerebral, you yeah. know, adult style animation yeah. as opposed to yeah. a child style? Yeah. I mean, I think generally as a studio, we've kind of been on that because of kids and family side of things. Yeah. Um, and that is, I guess where I'm kind of more comfortable I think generally because usually they're kind of more optimistic and, and positive. And I think I do, you know, we've only got so much time on this world and I'd yeah. rather spend my time trying to put out something that has a positive yeah. message and that, you know, entertains and uplifts and inspires. And um, so I think, I mean, I'm in that boat, but um, I do want to make things that actually have something to say as well yeah. and have some meaning um, I mean, I think Kizazimoto was like, was the ideal project in a sense that we got to be so creative and explore different styles and, and tell these different stories that had different relationships. Like, you know, there, there wasn't, yeah, it, it was a good range of projects, but they still all had some kind of human, you know, emotional relationship yeah. at, at the story's heart. Um, well, I, I, and like I said, I think if you can do it in a clever way, that's really, you know, entertaining. And I don't know, it's, it's not animation, it's, it's a live action film, but I thought it was very well done. I don't know if you've ever seen District 9. Um, mm -hmm. It was a sci-fi film, but it was set in, in Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah. And it really yeah. kind of played off of the the apartheid situation in a more sci-fi yeah. way and i thought it was a yeah. really clever and really well done um, especially for the mm. budget um, really well mm. done film you know sci-fi mm. film um, and i think mm. you know when you kind of find that that vein of how to tell a uh, engaging story um, and mm. if you've got something to say that's fine um, and it could be said and still kind of come across um, yeah. in a good entertaining way yeah but, exactly I'm, I'm there. <laughs> uh, for everybody just joining in, like I said, we had a little hiccup at the beginning, but, you know, hey, like I said, it's live. Um, but I, for those that's just joining in, we're having a fun conversation uh, with my friend, uh, creative director over at Triggerfish Animati Animation Studio um, in Cape Town. And we're getting ready to take a look um, at their demo reel. Like I said, if you've uh, got kids and you got Disney Plus, then I know you've seen their work and a lot of the work. Um, Kizazi Moto is the latest thing. Um, like I said, an anthology from 10 different directors um, and stories. And it was, like I said, really entertaining and well done. Um, we're going to take a quick look uh, at that before we dive into some more conversations here. Let's take a quick look at uh, Triggerfish's animation. Open your eyes. It is not what we have, but what we do. Let's go. To the big leagues, Jai Army! From the ruins of Great Zimbabwe! You are a disgrace to your name, kiddo. I should be out there making them pay! <laughs> Move? Again. You 
chose this fate. You think that's for us? Watch this. All right, let's play. Ready to meet your ancestors? Just some uh, amazing, amazing, I don't know why they keep coming on. Uh, amazing, amazing work. Um, and you kind of touched on it a little, but do you feel like, um, and, and did some of the directors kind of express while they were working on it, just like I said, the burden of if it wasn't successful, like I said, it may be setting back the industry over there. Over here, it's, you know, there's a lot of, just bad movies that are put out and they still get put out, but you know, uh, and they still ha seem to have dollars thrown at them. It's a different, obviously yeah. over there because you're, you're trying to get the industry really growing. Um, yeah. Obviously the bottom line for the studio is that it's successful and, and it makes money. Was that something that some of the directors and people working on it kind of felt a little bit, of the pressure of it being a successful, uh, you know, a successful film that it might set us back some a few years. Yeah, I think they all felt it, even if they didn't admit it. I think um, it was like you know we we can't fail because um, we won't get this chance again, and I think everyone knew that they had to succeed. Um, and it was it was it was tough on them for sure. Um, and that I, I mean the my my the highlight was when we had finished and we screened it in LA, and everyone saw each other's films for the first time. And I think they all saw like what we'd done, and you know, so it was it was really a huge relief, I guess, that that it had worked. And that we'd done something good, um, but until that point, you know, we didn't know. Um, and so, yeah, like in the getting some awards and recognition, I think that really helps to just cement that. Um, and it can change the industries, you know. I know, like Raymond in in Uganda, yeah. he's a big, you know, spokesperson for the industry in Uganda. And you know, now having that film behind him gives him so much more power when he talks to government, for example trying to get them to support the industry so i think it could do huge things for sure yeah, yeah and if, yeah. if it wasn't a success that might not have we might not have been able to so yeah. yeah yeah like i said um i think we over here you know kind of take for granted just the challenges that you know creators over in other countries have to go through like you said with just infrastructure you know, um, schooling, advanced education, I mean, schooling, um, equipment, um, power. There's just so many different things that we don't think about over here because it's yeah. just a mainstay thing. And, you know, we're just cranking out stuff. Um, and yeah. over there, yeah. the, the, the general thought is, you know, we work with what we got and we just create the best with, with you know, the resources that we, we have. Um, yeah. and just trust in that. Um, yeah. if you're, what would you say to somebody that's, you know, looking to, to do what you do, um, and get into this space? What are the qualities that you would say somebody needs to have, um, moving mm -hmm. forward if they want to really be successful in the industry and really go far mm -hmm. within the industry? I think, um, Definitely, you need to be passionate about the industry. Um, and especially in Africa, you know, it's not just, oh, I'm a fan of animation. I mean, it's like you you really, you are building and growing the industry around yourself along with the other people in the industry. It's like you're all doing it together. Yeah. Um, and so you need that passion to drive you through the hard times um, and the patience and to ride it out because it does take a long time. Um, um, but yeah, I, I guess a sort of also an, an openness and willingness to learn and to listen and to, you know, be curious about the world and each other and um, just having that that empathy, I guess, um, because it's animation is not an industry for ego, you know, you have to really, um, 
collaborate to make something better than you could do alone. Yeah. And so I, th I think those qualities are probably necessary. For sure. Uh, you, like I said, done some stuff, uh, you know, obviously created your own kind of content as well. Um, is, you know, and you mentioned uh, Blender. Um, there's a lot of great tools out there, obviously, that, that definitely helps to give access to people. Um, like I said, not everybody can afford Maya, especially the independent yeah. creator. Um, yeah. But you have tools now such as Blender. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're an editor, DaVinci Resolve, there's so many more affordable mm -hmm. tools um, that, that creators can get their hands on. What do you love about, I mean, what is it that you love about Blender? I mean, obviously doing Kizazi Moto, it was definitely a different pipeline, um, definitely mm -hmm. different software. Um, mm -hmm. Is there, you know, like I said, you use Blender to create your own stuff. What is it that, you know, kind of sets Blender apart um, for kind of the mm -hmm. independent creator? Well, so just to just to correct, um, so I, I produced the short made in Blender, so yeah. I didn't use it myself. I mean, I think um, I... I've I've gotten so removed from the actual technology side of animation now because I'm more on story. But mm -hmm. but 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 Blender was really an, a a great program to work in, and we used Grease Pencil for the two D shorts. But we also could use the three D side of it to sort of mark out some sets and things. And um, I mean, just this the using free software is possible to make like yeah to get a lot done. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Kizazi was great because we worked with different studios and different pipelines. And so they had Unreal, they had 2D, they had 3D, you know. Um, and I don't think it, in a way, it matters what yeah. technology you use, you know. It's just about using it in an interesting way to get whatever you need to achieve done. And so it's like, just use whatever you can get your hands on, you know. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. That That's kind of how I feel. No, I agree. I agree. Um, and kind of the, the, along the veins of the technology um, and using the technology, obviously, uh, right now, we're kind of going through this AI wave. Um, yeah. And, you know, people either on the AR train or not on the AR, or not AR, AI train or not on the AI train. Um, what are your kind of general thoughts about AI and how it's going to affect maybe how Triggerfish does things. Have they, you know, tried it in mm -hmm. some areas? You know, what's your overall general thought of this AI wave that's, you know, sweeping yeah. the industry? I mean, at first I wasn't too kind of worried about it because it's like, well, we already use AI in Photoshop, you know, yeah. it's like it's, it's there. But, but the more that it's come... I don't know, it's like, it's gone quickly now. Um, and it's doing amazing things. And I mean, there is a certain kind of fear, I guess, that is probably warranted um, because it could replace some jobs, yeah. um, but it could also, you know, make certain things easier. And we definitely are exploring that um, in terms of our pipelines, like how can we make things more efficient and actually save people time, you know, yeah. make their job less about the kind of manual and be more creative then in their job yeah. because the computer's doing the other stuff. Um, so if we can get that balance right, it would be amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're looking into it, but don't know if we have an opinion just yet, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I, we've been using AI for a while. A lot of people may not look at it as AI, but, you know, I tell people it's a tool like any other tool mm -hmm. that's used to, make a process or a task easier or quicker uh, for sure. That's how I, I look at it. And I would definitely much rather use uh, Adobe Sensei AI tool to select something in Photoshop. Um, you like you said, you, you, well, first off, what is it that you hope people kind of take away from watching, you know, Kizazi Moto um, come, come out of that, you know, thinking mm -hmm. and feeling. Um, what are your thoughts of, of what you would hope people pull from Kizazi Moto? Yeah. I guess 
I mean, I, I would hope they just get excited by what they're seeing because because I do. I mean, I'm still watching that trailer. I'm like, yeah, that's so cool. Like, and I've watched it so many times. Um, and I think just seeing like the sort of quality that maybe people are surprised that that came from Africa, you know, yeah. and 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 so. Yeah, hopefully it would make them curious to find out more and to want to work with Africa more and, and yeah. support, you know, tell more stories from there. Um, because there are a lot more stories to tell. And I think that's kind of, I guess, then actually what I want is like, I want more stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, like I said, we want to see um, just more stories from all over uh, the world. Because like I yeah. said, there's just creators all over that just have, um, such great stories to tell again they just need the opportunity um, and the resources to, to get it out there um, totally. again everybody just tuning in we're having an amazing conversation uh, with my friend Anthony Silverstone of Triggerfish uh, Animation Studios um, making some big waves uh, helping to make some big waves over there uh, in the continent of Africa uh, and the quality of what they're putting out. Um, again, I appreciate so much uh, everybody, uh, you know, joining in and tuning in. Again, forgive me for the the minor hiccups that we've had uh, at the beginning, but hey, we're 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 back on the train again, and now we're having uh, some good good uh, conversation. Tell us a little more about um, the nonprofit Triggerfish foundation and triggerfish academy um and the things that you're doing within that to really help to aid mm -hmm. the industry there in the continent sure um yeah so we started the foundation i think really we started offering some bursaries so um uh i think we've actually given out around 70 bursaries by now um so there's a local animation school in cape town and you know we we um, we've sent some students through all three years, um, and and then you know we have various internships and and things like that as well. Um, but really, it it we we need more more training in general. And so we we started an academy. Um, it's still early days. We've we've got a few courses that we we've posted for free. Um, and you know, I think the first video was like how to convince your your parents that animation is a career. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was one of the challenges we had. Um, but then, yeah, we did a storyboard course, and um, now we've just released a produce producing course. Uh, and I think we've always... yeah. excuse me, I don't know why this um, keeps coming on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Okay, I think I think we've always had the attitude of kind of sharing the knowledge that we gain along the way. Like you know, we're still learning, but as soon as we learn something, we we want to teach others and share it because that's the only way we can all grow. Um, and so yeah, trying to just encourage more students to get into animation, I guess, on the continent. And um, so we we've we've managed to raise some money recently as well so we'll be doing a few more courses and i think um build that out over time but yeah we've we've done lots of sort of outreach things where you know we've gone to schools and explain what is animation what are the different job options that kind of thing yeah so yeah well do you enjoy the process? Uh, obviously, like you said, you're 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 more on the story side, um, you know, producing side. Um, what's your kind of process when you 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 sit down and and write a story out? Is it easier for you when you're kind of working with, say, partners on uh, other people to bounce ideas off of, as opposed to your kind of own thing, own story that you're writing mm -hmm. out? Which do you kind of prefer? Um, but what's kind of your process for when you're you're looking to create a, a story and, and get it out there? Yeah, I think um, it's I definitely find it easier with other people. Like uh, like when you're by yourself and you hit a wall, that's it. You know, <laughs> but when you've got someone else to bounce off, then you can maybe break through the wall. Um, and yeah, you know, we 
it, it I guess each story starts differently, but they sort of end up in a similar place maybe where as like, then you start going, okay, well, like, you know, who is this character? That's really where it has to start. Um, what is their journey? What is their, well, yeah, lesson that they learn? How do they change, you know, the strengths and flaws and all that sort of basic story stuff. It, it usually starts there. Um, and for me, I, I like to kind of go backwards as well, where I'm like, well, where are they going to end up? What are you actually saying with this movie? Like when people walk out the theater, what are they, what is the message they take from having watched that? And then everything should lead towards that. And um, so you need that kind of North Star. Um, and the simpler it is really, the the better and the easier it is to, to get everything pointing to that then. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we, I've, I have realized there's a difference in, de in developing series and features. Um, I think shorts are more like features. Is yeah. that kind of one singular concept that you're trying to, um, is that distill? what you would rather focus on? Like just one kind of say film with one concept going through or say, like you think, said, a series. Yeah. Personally, I, I think I feel more comfortable in features. But, you know, we have developed some series and, and it's been fun. And I think this is a, what's nice about it is the sort of iterative learning. So, you you know, you can develop the overall concept of the show. Um, but then as you write more episodes, you know, you can kind of evolve your characters and stories and you, you get better at it. Whereas with a feature film, you just rewrite that same feature film <laughs> over and over. And so you're like, you've learned the lesson, but... You, it's too late. It's like, <laughs> you've got to start again. Um, oh, so man. No, like you said, I know it's not an easy, easy thing for sure. Uh, what's kind of in the future? Um, I mean, I know you can't dive too deep into mm -hmm. any kind of one particular project or current particular project um, that you may or may be working on, but what's kind of in the future for Triggerfish mm -hmm. um, moving forward? Um, we have a big feature film with with one of the the studios that it's been in development for five years so i'm hoping this year it actually gets a green light and we move forwards um and that would be amazing because i think that would be the next big thing you know really um and then we have a, a, a more adult animation series that's also been in development for a number of years at another studio so hoping that this year moves forwards on that one um oh, but man. those are a little bit out of our control you know when it's with an yeah. external student yeah. so we have um a preschool show that we've been developing in-house based on a, the belly flop short film that we did and i think you know we we excited about that one we've got a, a 2d series that we developed with with terence actually one of the director of hatima yeah it's his concept art um it's called tonko and and then um what else? We've got a number of projects in development, yeah. so it's kind of, I guess, what might happen first. But we're also looking at another graphic novel because um, Pearl of the Sea, I think, was an interesting, you know, test for us, and um, we're looking to adapt that uh, into a, a live action. Um, so that would be, if we can get that going, you know, that would be exciting because there are not many family films from Africa. Mm. Um, and yeah so. well is the is that a surprising thing or i won't say surprise i don't think it's surprising for the people that are in it but that most people don't get it takes a long time to get mm -hmm. kind of you know the seed of the idea to, to actually mm -hmm. getting into production to actually getting it done um mm -hmm. is is that something that you're getting used to it took you a while to kind of get used to just the length of time yeah. it takes to get things off yeah. the ground it, it definitely in the beginning i thought i was doing something wrong and i was like why isn't this happening faster <laughs> and i've sort of settled into it's not me it's the industry it's the process <laughs> it, there's so many factors that you know and the bigger the projects especially the more other people are involved and the more money is involved and so it takes longer to raise that money and it means the story has to be better and so I have definitely sort of gone, okay, it'll take the time it's going to take. And that might be five years and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah. 
Well, in, and along that vein, and like I said, we're, we're going to kind of bring this train into the station here, but um, we kind of uh, alluded earlier, the industry is kind of seeing a hit a little, just as far as mm-hmm. jobs. And I mean, I don't know mm-hmm. if it's so prevalent and maybe you can say it over there, but over here, there's a lot of, you know, people looking for work, trying to get into the industry. Mm-hmm. What are your kind of thoughts as to kind of why the industry is kind of going through this little bumpy stage right now? Is it the influx of creators that are starting to get into it? There's so many people buying for these jobs and studios and things like that or is it do you feel like the medium itself isn't quite getting up to where say film should be why do you Mm. feel like you know the industry like i said is kind of going through this little rocky stage Mm. of just getting work in yeah it's it's i mean it is unfortunate but i guess it's also because a couple years ago it was at such a peak like i mean I think there really was a huge amount of animation happening that was just completely unprecedented. Um, all the streamers were just green lighting stuff. And, you know, um, we were lucky in a way that Kizazimoto got greenlit when it did, because if we tried now, I'm not sure we would get it greenlit. Um, and so I think it was just, in a way, there was just too much. Um, and everyone had to kind of course correct and go, okay, now, you know, they've got less money there's more competition um all the streamers are sort of consolidating but you know there's still a model in europe and there's a lot more indie animation features happening now that's sort of smaller scale yeah um so i think there'll always be things happening it's just in different formats um maybe more gaming things maybe more comics graphic novels you know and, and i think everyone's still developing you know all the yeah. artists are always gonna be the be yeah. artists and yeah. so when when things pick up again i think um it'll it'll probably even out again yeah definitely um like i said it's it's always a cyclical type of thing um yeah. where it comes back around and the industry will pick up yeah. um Again, like I said, uh, uh, I want to close this out, but I do want to thank uh, one you because <laughs> I don't think a lot of people kind of get it, and sometimes it kind of uh, goes over my head sometimes that it is such a massive time difference, and it's it's late, <laughs> always late over in uh, right. Africa, the continent. So I always uh, appreciate and thank so much uh my guests overseas that agree to be on live because it is late when it's it's a live show and it is late when it's over there so i can't thank you enough anthony one uh again for connecting with me uh in the first place and then two um agreeing to come on the show kick off like i said second quarter of season four um and really come and share what trigger fish is doing because like i said they are working on some and have worked on some amazing stuff. Like I said, if if you do have Disney Plus, um, make sure you check out Kizazi Moto. Um, make sure you support the industry over there because, like it is, it is uh, about helping to you know build up the industry over there because there's a lot of great creators. Um, like you said, it just needs infrastructure. It just needs some other things, other small things to kind of help to grow the industry over there, but from all the content coming out, Kazazimoto, like I said, Kugali, Iwaju starting to come out. There's just some amazing stories that uh, need to be told uh, by some amazing creators. So I can't thank you enough uh, for one, what you're doing for the industry. I love the industry all over the world. It's just an industry that I love. Um, And just seeing all the different stories come out um, is such a joy to me because um, I want the industry to really grow and and you're doing some amazing things uh, with Trigger Fish and some of the other studios. So thank you, thank you, thank you for for being on. Uh, Appreciate uh, your patience uh, with all the little uh, hiccups and everything. Uh, Miss Maggie, I uh, appreciated it there. Let me get your comment in there, Miss May. I appreciate appreciate all the viewers, again, that support the show um, and really get behind it. 
Uh, my goal, like I said, is to really help the industry, this industry mm -hmm. that I love. And so uh, I cannot do it without all my guests and friends that come on the show. And I definitely can't do it without you, the viewers, uh, coming on the show. Uh, make sure that uh, you connect with Triggerfish, uh, connect with Anthony, check out all the stuff that they're working on. You can uh, find them, uh, both him and Triggerfish on Twitter, uh, Triggerfish, uh, Twitter.com slash Triggerfish and Twitter.com Antimator. Uh, and they're on Instagram as well. Like I said, if you're a, a Disney Plus fan, you know, I know you're you're watching the content and can't wait to see uh, even more content uh, come from the continent of Africa, for sure. So, again, uh, you know, Anthony, thank you so much. We've been having some technical difficulties with that audio there on this scene for some reason. Uh, but, again, Anthony, thank you so much for, for being on the show. I definitely cannot wait um, to have you. Uh, back on the show um, and talk about even more stuff uh, that Trigger Fish is working on and that uh, the industry is really growing on over there in the continent of Africa. Cool. Thank you. If you don't, Thanks. if I know it's late, but if you wouldn't yeah. mind hanging out for just one minute uh, in the green room while I close out the show, I would appreciate it. Um, but everybody, uh, please help me thank again uh, my very special guest and friend, uh, Mr. Anthony Silverston from Triggerfish uh, Animation Studio. Hang out for just a second, Anthony, while I close out the show. Uh, I would appreciate it. Guys, gals, uh, like I said, a little rocky. Uh, you know, I apologize for that, as always, but... Uh, you know what I always say, what happens live happens live, and you just kind of have to roll with it um, and work from there. But uh, this, uh, like I said, was an amazing show. Uh, I've been so looking forward, like I said, to getting uh, Anthony on. I've been a big fan and a follower of Triggerfish um, and the con content that they've been creating uh, and love it. Um, like I said, all the creators coming out of, of Africa, like I said, it's the industry over there is really growing, and I'm so, so happy to see that uh, for sure. Uh, everybody, again, like I said, I cannot thank you enough for being part of the show, tuning in uh, live, catching it on the replay. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for making the show uh, as you know popular and as big as it is. Um, we are an international company uh, or an international show you know what can I say uh, but it's always uh, always fun for me to sit down like I said and do this and bring the show to you um, and again like I said I cannot do it without you the viewers uh, tuning in and my guests and friends coming on the show um, I learned so much myself um, just talking to them and it's uh, I learned a lot today for sure next week like i said is going to be no exception this this season four is jam-packed with a lot of great creators coming on the show working on a lot of amazing stuff and like i said looking forward to next week's episode as well make sure you tune in because next week we got mr jason cavett senior motion graphics artist and art director coming on the show we're going to sit and talk about motion graphics and motion design which i love as well uh, so super for super looking forward uh to having jason finally on the show wow uh i got through this relatively <laughs> relatively unscathed for sure but again uh, make sure you tune in next week thank you for tuning in today uh, i will see you next week same bat time or same bat channel Everybody have a great weekend and a great week. Cheers. <laughs>